Jesus, the name of the Father and the Son. And the Holy Ghost is coming in the same name. Name. Do you follow that? Yes. Um, it in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have, have said unto you. Okay? Let's go to Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The name of Jesus or Yahshua. Jehovah saves. Alright. Um, go to Philippians chapter 2 verse 9. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above Every name. There's a name that's above every name. Next verse. That at the name of Jesus, or Joshua, every knee should bow of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth. Next verse. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. The Father. Alright, so if we were to go back to this equation... Go baptize in the name of the Father. If we're looking for one name, I think it would be easy to say that that name is Joshua, Jesus, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Ghost. It's all one name. The name that is above every other name. Amen. The name that every need shall bow every time. The name that there's no salvation in any other. Right. In that name. There is one name that is higher than any other name. And that is Jehovah saves. That's the most powerful name in the universe. Amen. Amen. Yes. Praise God. Alright, let's go to the book of Acts, chapter number one. <clears throat> Verse number four. Somebody begin reading that for me. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days yet. This is what John began to preach. You're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. I baptize you with fire, getting you ready for it. Now, they're waiting on what? They're waiting on a promise, which is from the Father. Okay, read on. But John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. But ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be my witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Okay, so you're going to receive power when this when this promise is come upon you, called the Holy Ghost. Uh, skip over to verse number 12. Then they returned, then returned they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olive, which is from Jerusalem, a, day's, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into the upper room, where both, both Peter and John, James and John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zedarah, and Judas the brother of James. And they all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. 
Alright, so how many were in this upper room that were waiting? About 120. And they were waiting for power from on high. They were waiting on this promise because when, when Jesus ascended, he told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for this because you're going to receive promise. You're going to be a new with power from on high. So this is what they are doing. They're waiting. Let's uh let's skip over to Acts chapter 2 and verse number 1. Somebody read that for me. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them us. Alright, now they've been waiting on this promise, and now this promise begins to be poured out. Now, when God gives a promise, He always seals His promise with what? A sign. A sign. And right here, this promise is being poured out in this dispensation. And it's being sealed with a sign. What is the sign that seals the promise? Speaking in tongues is the sign that seals this promise. And we know God is consistent. So He's going to have a sign to seal the promise. And if we're going to have the promise, that means we have to have the sign. If we don't have the sign, we don't have, have the promise. Just all the way back to Abraham. If they didn't have the sign, which was circumcision, they didn't have the promise. Alright, so this Holy Ghost is being poured out. They're speaking with, with other tongues. Um, read on. Verse 5. Men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noise aboard, okay, the multitude came together. Alright, so so here, here you have these 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 people, they're speaking in tongues, something crazy is going on, and it and it's noise to wrong. Now they're in Jerusalem on this Jewish holiday called Pentecost, where people come from all over the world to Jerusalem to worship. And this is noise abroad, and whenever you have a commotion like this, it's going to draw a crowd. Right. Everybody's coming to see what in the world is going on. Right. And let's let's look here. Let's look here. Um, verses eight through eleven. They begin to notice these people, these Galileans, which were considered uneducated men. They, they notice these Galileans speaking in their their native tongue from all over the world where they're from. And they're like, what in the world does this mean? This is crazy. Um, verse, look at verse 12. They were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what, what meaning is this? What does this mean? Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. They're drunk. And then look at verse 14. Peter, now Peter, he had some keys, remember? Peter stood up with the keys that the Lord had given him. Now, the keys are to unlock the door. And he takes his keys and he begins to unlock the door. Um, Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, You men of Judea and all you that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. They're, they're drunk, but they're not drunk like you think they're drunk. You notice how he worded that? But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So he begins to preach to them. This is prophecy of old being fulfilled right before your eyes. Amen. And he begins to preach this first gospel message. And you can read this message, uh, verses 17 through verse 35. That, that, or through verse 36 that he begins to preach to them. And basically, what's the gospel? It's the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he preaches this gospel message to them. He brings in prophecy of old. He shows them how it's being fulfilled before their very eyes. He's taking these keys. Now, when they heard this gospel message, they were pricked in their heart. They were convicted. Look at that. Look at that. Verse 